people, Ian here, and today I'm bringing you another Cinema 4D tutorial. This one is talking about one of my previous animations, which I personally learnt through a tutorial on Grayscale Gorilla, and I did mention this, but people kept asking for a tutorial about it, so here I am. This full credit goes to um, Grayscale Gorilla. I have no input into this project other than making it and so you can follow mine if you want but the actual tutorial link will be in the description as well but this is what I did here kind of an abstract shape kind of spins around disappears appears uh, looks pretty cool and it's really fun to make and the techniques used can be used for a lot of other projects um, so I'll just jump right in here just open up Cinema 4D then in your objects, insert a sphere. Now you want to change the type to hemisphere and the segments up to 40. Now these aren't exact numbers so you don't need to follow them exactly but this is what I did so uh, you can follow along if you want to make something exactly the same or you can make something completely different, it's up to you. Now with the sphere selected we need to add some depth otherwise it won't look quite right so we want to go into simulate cloth and cloth nerves and just drag the sphere into this cloth nerves now inside here we want to change the thickness to 3 and what this is going to do is just kind of give this a bit of depth rather than it being very flat so this is with and this is without as you can see it's a big difference and also with the additional subdivisions here you can see we get um, a lot smoother curves as well which is what we want in fact I might put this up to 2 there you can see very smooth curves and next thing we need to do is make this entire object editable so we just need to press C on our keyboard or you can go over and press this button up here and then just drag the sphere outside of the cloth nerb snow object and we can delete that. Next thing we need to do is select all the uh, polygons inside here um, so we can put the material on. First thing we're going to do is create these two materials so just double click down here twice to create two new materials double click on the first one uncheck color and specular and turn on luminance and this will be our white material and on the other one just uncheck these make a luminance and make this black and that's our black material now the next thing to do is with our sphere selected go to the polygon selection mode and this will make the entire object blue and we want to go into select and loop select and very carefully holding down shift just select every single one of these circles without selecting anything like that otherwise it will go around the entire object and not just the inside of it which is not what we want as you can see I'm awful at doing this at any sort of speed just be careful when you're doing it and soon we have the entire inside of it selected like so and the outside is completely free and we just want to go to select and set selection and this will make a selection of these polygons here next thing we want to do is right click on the black material and select apply and this will apply the material to the object and use this polygon selection mode to only colour in the inside so if we render this out the inside is black and if we put the white material on and just drag it before the black material now the outside is white and the inside is black which is very cool uh, this can be used for any sort of project not just for this as well so the next stage is to select your sphere go to MoGraph and Cloner and just drag the sphere into the cloner object, make the count about 40 and just put the Y position to 0 and on the scale just put 98 for each one 
and as you can see here we get all these clones which slowly get smaller and smaller as we go in and the next stage is with the cloner selected go to MoGraph, Effector and Step now you want to check off the scale so the scale doesn't change and it's just rotation now which if we rotate we get all these cool shapes starting to appear now as you can see it's very slow because there are a lot of polygons in the scene so you just got to be careful you don't subdivide it too much as this is a powerful computer and it's still struggling even though there's only two subdivisions now the next thing we want to do is go to the floor section and insert a background and just drag your white material onto your background and then we need to just play with some render settings so just click on the render settings mode for the output we want the width on 1280 and the height on 720 and then we want to right click here or you can go to effect and cell renderer and just have outline and color selected and this is going to give you a very nice render here which if we go to our top view maybe or even to our bottom view there you can see we have this really cool shape which if we play around with the parameters of our in fact I'm just going to make it so I can see roughly what's going on if we play around with the rotation we get these very cool and interesting shapes and all you have to do now is keyframe it basically and so just like in my animation it started off at zero and the actual cloner object the position of it started um, completely rotated round 180 degrees so it was at minus 180 here and we just made a keyframe and then at say 15 frames it was back to zero and so this means the object rotates around and then in the step effector uh, you can do whatever you like here and so make the keyframe of all three of these so just hold down control and the click on the little circle here will change it red that means there's a keyframe and then just play around with these so maybe rotate it that way a bit rotate it there and here and then just make a keyframe and we'll just see how that looks it looks very nice the best thing about this is you don't need any lighting or anything it's all done by luminance and the cell renderer and so you get this really nice outline with a very nice inside as well and so you can just play around with these then maybe here this will go all the way back around this will continue to turn this might go back a bit and just make another keyframe and then you get this really nice cool animation which swirls around and then the actual cloner as well you might want to rotate this round a bit as it's going so maybe put it up here and so as it's going oh, I'll drive the keyframe by mistake as it's going round you can see you get these really nice cool patterns that go around and then to end it up I just rotated it back round to the beginning to make the here you can see at the start in fact that little bit at the very start here that was purely a After Effects transition I just made a uh, still frame of this circle at the beginning and put a uh, rotate transition and just keyframed it so it started to appear and it was very simple to do I uh, just made it look like it was going around in clockwork this sphere here in fact um, I'll just show you how to do that quickly um, I'll do it in a new scene so it's a bit quicker what you want to do is go here to our spline section and insert an arc 
and make the start angle minus 90 and the end angle 90. Then go into our nerves here and insert a lot of nerves and just insert the arc into here. Then you just play around with the start angle and as you can see in fact if we make this into a, uh, I can't remember what I used <laughs> probably was a ring yeah there we are if we just make this 190 or in fact 195 just so it has a bit of depth here and then just play around with the start angle and we start it at zero and then just increase it round you can see we get a growing or um, ungrowing shrinking uh, sphere and that's just how I did the start bit and just started like that then just keyframed it so it disappeared and then we had the object here which slowly rotated and then came back and then just faded out and the text was just done in After Effects as well it's very simple to do and I have to thank Grayscale Gorilla again for this tutorial um, it was great I always get a lot of I like, well, I like to follow his tutorials there it's some great inspiration and can really spark some creativity as well um, you can do so much with this program and when you just lack that bit of creativity it's always nice to go around sites kind of finding what other people are doing maybe trying to um, recreate what they've done or in fact use some of the techniques they've used and make a project completely of your own but just make sure if you do use this tutorial just credit um, Grayscale Gorilla, not me, because I did not make this. This is just a tutorial for popular demand. And so, yeah, please, if you just like this tutorial, then just click like on the video, maybe give a comment below. I really don't want any comments saying you stole this, because I know I did, and I'm giving credit to the original maker. So, yeah, just enjoy playing around with these techniques, and I'll see you soon.